Guangxi is shocked by the sudden death of a large number of bird deaths. The cause is mind-boggling. Wealthy Chinese leaving in mass, with large amounts of cash smuggled out of the country. Walmart withdraws from China and moves its purchasing center to Vietnam. China's quirky and unique industry thrives on divorce rates. Largest population county in China shuts down 50 kindergartens in 8 months. It's all covered in today's China Truths. Guangxi is shocked by the sudden death of a large number of bird deaths. The cause is mind-boggling. Recently, Liuzhou and Guangxi experienced an unusual event, a sky filled with swallows, initially mistaken for a significant occurrence. However, attention quickly shifted to the discovery of numerous dead swallows scattered on the ground, triggering discussions and speculations. According to some netizens, the sudden drop in temperature is believed to have caused the swallows to freeze to death. Swallows, known for their adaptability to various environments, including mountains, grasslands, and urban areas, typically seek warm areas during winter foraging to avoid the impact of cold weather. However, the swift changes brought about by climate change present a significant challenge for swallows. Their habitats and food sources are affected, increasing the risk of miscalculations and the potential for freezing to death. In contrast, some questioned whether the large gathering of swallows could be a sign of an impending earthquake. The report, however, clarifies that scientists have not found any correlation between abnormal animal behavior and earthquakes. It underscores that earthquakes not only influence the ionosphere but also disrupt the geomagnetic field. Consequently, before an earthquake occurs, a variety of organisms on Earth may exhibit abnormal behavior. Nevertheless, it is not conclusive that the erratic flight of a single species alone can predict an impending earthquake. Wealthy Chinese leaving in mass, with large amounts of cash smuggled out of the country. As China's economy continues to decline and government regulations become more stringent, many wealthy Chinese are concerned about falling into the authorities' common prosperity trap. They are employing various methods to smuggle large amounts of cash out of the country to invest in second homes overseas. On November 14, Australia's Sydney Morning Herald reported that numerous wealthy Chinese individuals are willing to entrust their life savings to a group of strangers they only know through online social platforms to facilitate the transfer of their assets abroad. Phoebe, a 32-year-old Chinese woman, is one of them. She recently smuggled about 1 million yuan, roughly $210,000, out of the country. She explained that initially, the money had to be transferred to the account of the Chinese service provider. A few hours later, a separate account she held in Hong Kong began receiving piecemeal remittances from a total of 10 people, one of whom deposited through an ATM. Despite Hong Kong losing many freedoms under Beijing's control, Phoebe can go anywhere as long as she has cash. In October of this year, lawyer Liang Xiaohua, the former chief compliance officer of a mainland asset management company, mentioned in an interview that there are numerous ways for Chinese funds to escape. Presently, some corrupt officials and business owners are doing just that. Taking advantage of Hong Kong Luahu Customs not inspecting everyone and every vehicle, they engage in 10 or 20 errands to move money there and then convert it to USD. Many Ways to Transfer Funds Legal transfers of cash from China have been severely restricted in recent years with individuals typically only able to wire $50,000 overseas each year. Additionally, Chinese citizens have an opportunity to transfer funds when they immigrate. As previously reported, to meet the needs of more and more wealthy Chinese, underground banks have sprung up like mushrooms after a rain. Joel Gallo, an adjunct professor of finance at New York University Shanghai, said, they operate like quasi-banking companies but they operate without regulation and cleverly operate in a gray area to engage in regulatory arbitrage. According to lawyer Liang Xiaohua, many people in China currently transfer their assets through underground banks. For example, many middle-class people transfer relatively small amounts of money, ranging from hundreds of thousands of dollars to millions of dollars. According to official reports from the Chinese Communist Party, underground banks are huge in scale. In 2021, the State Administration of Foreign Exchange of the Communist Party of China reported that an underground bank in Gansu province transferred 75.6 billion yuan, had five network organizations, 
and used more than 8,000 bank accounts in more than 20 provinces. Underground banks not only operate in Hong Kong but also exist in places with Chinese populations around the world. According to a 2019 intelligence report by the UK's National Crime Agency, NCA, British law enforcement officials discovered that Chinese student accounts were sometimes used as backdoors for money laundering. The NCA identified more than 100 people who deposited cash into more than 14,000 bank accounts, with the total cash deposited into these accounts exceeding £100 million, approximately $190 million, in a 12-month period. Additionally, it is common for Chinese tourists to leave cash abroad while traveling. Gary Ng, a senior economist at the French investment bank Nadexis, estimates that as much as $150 billion will flow out of the country this year. Financial professionals also provide free information to some wealthy Chinese people on how to transfer funds. Of course, this involves risks, and they may lose their careers. But some are willing to take the risk for the sake of a potential customer base. UBS Group AG estimates in its annual wealth report that 6.2 million people in China have assets of more than $1 million by the end of 2022. If the amount of money that needs to be moved is large, a common method is to tamper with an import contract settled overseas or to forge a transaction outright. In a case in Wenzhou, China, a company created fraudulent business transactions, claiming it paid $9 million for imported goods. Another Shenzhen-based investment company fabricated a transaction and transferred nearly $18 million overseas. Lian Xiaohua said that this method is mostly nested in normal trade transactions. It is very convenient for Beijing's powerful companies, such as arms companies like Poly, and foreign investment companies to pour out money in this way, and no one will check it at all. He said that if a powerful person needs to move a large amount of money, he can do so through a series of legal channels such as belt and road investment, investment in infrastructure, railway investment, etc. The nominal investment is 100 million yuan, but in fact, it may only be 70 million yuan. The remaining money is poured out. Rich Chinese and money are fleeing China. There are growing signs that more wealthy Chinese people and money are fleeing the country. In August this year, Jue IQI, Asia's largest real estate consultancy, predicted that more than 700,000 Chinese will leave China in the next two years. Popular destinations for them to buy real estate include Australia, Canada, and the United Kingdom. Singapore has also become an increasingly popular destination, with trendy bars owned by Chinese billionaires dotted around the city and a proliferation of offices managing the assets of wealthy families. In an interview in October, Meng Jun, a wealthy Chinese businessman living in the United States, said that China's economic situation continues to deteriorate, and the stock and real estate markets continue to decline, and now they have collapsed. Many wealthy people desperately sell their houses in the first-tier cities of Beijing, Shanghai, Guangzhou and Shenzhen and then transfer their money overseas. This is a relatively common phenomenon. Meng Jun said that some of his friends saw that China's economy had no hope, so they closed down their companies and transferred assets. A few friends in the United States and Canada transfer money by buying houses. Each property is worth between 2 million and 5 million US dollars, and they are traded in RMB. He said that the rich people have run away. It is difficult to pursue investment immigration in the United States. You can go to Canada, Singapore, and Thailand. Anyway, there are various channels. Walmart withdraws from China and moves its purchasing center to Vietnam. On November 17, Weibo Big V Financial Fox, the well-known financial blogger, professional investor, posted a blog post saying, Big Signal. Walmart withdraws from China and moves its procurement center to Vietnam. Another giant turned around and left, following BlackRock, after Vanguard Fund, Walmart also chose to say goodbye. Should we prepare in advance for this cold winter? As soon as the news came out, the market was shocked. The blog stated that Walmart once dominated the Chinese market, but now it has chosen to move its procurement center to Vietnam. This not only means a strategic shift, but also heralds a change in the competitive landscape of China's retail industry. With the acceleration of globalization, international giants are adjusting their strategies and looking for new development opportunities. This is exactly the real problem we are facing. 
the blog post immediately sparked heated discussions among the public. Some netizens left comments as below. In the past, China was part of the Western industrial chain. Now it has to compete with others for the industrial chain. It would be strange not to run away. It is inevitable in the transition period. If you want to make money on your own, you have to consider these things. Of course, it has to do with workers. The only difference is job opportunities, after all, they are all proletarians who cannot stand up. Walmart is the largest retailer in the United States. Most of the items in it are purchased from China, which has a great impact on China's manufacturing exports. Big-name supermarkets have advantages if they really want to compete. Generally speaking, the impact on the economy of not wanting to invest and withdrawing investment is certain, but it may be due to lack of confidence. One user emphasized that, frogs in the well generally think that Walmart is the supermarket next to their home. Note that what they evacuate is the purchasing center, which serves not only Chinese supermarkets but also Walmart global supermarkets. Additionally, a user questioned whether the asset divestment was primarily driven by economic factors or the aftermath of the pandemic. China's quirky and unique industry thrives on divorce rates. In today's society, divorce rates remain consistently high, reaching up to 44% in China alone. In response to this societal trend, a quirky business has emerged in China, attracting attention for its distinctive service, the destruction of wedding photos. Liu, a resident of Langfang, Hebei Province, established an offline business on the 7th of this month, offering a cost-effective solution for divorced couples looking to part ways with their wedding photos. Liu explained that he initiated this business with a simple motivation, to safeguard personal privacy, as wedding photos fall within this realm. Recognizing a strong demand for such a service, he has received orders from every province and city nationwide, except Tibet. The process is straightforward, Lu's company charges based on weight, ranging from tens to over a hundred Chinese yuan, approximately $14. Once an agreement is made, customers ship their photos to the company in Langfang, Hebei province. The staff begins by spray-painting the photos and sending a video to the customer. Subsequently, the wedding photos are fed into a powerful shredder, and the uniform fragments are sent to a power plant for dissolution, ensuring complete destruction. The entire process is documented, and the video serves as evidence for the customer. In China, discarding wedding photos after a divorce is not as straightforward as one might think. People often choose to print their wedding pictures on durable acrylic canvases, known for being fire-resistant and resistant to tearing and breakage. They are reputed to endure various tests, symbolizing the resilience of a marriage over a lifetime. Unfortunately, many modern marriages in China lack the resilience of these canvases. When couples divorce, the seemingly indestructible wedding photos become a source of distress. Many divorced couples reluctantly dispose of their wedding photos in the trash. However, some couples are unwilling to do so, fearing recognition by others. While Lu's business may be the only one of its kind in China, its swift success has surprised the owner. Other companies are hesitant to enter this field, mainly due to traditional Chinese beliefs discouraging the burning of photos of living people. Consequently, Lu's straightforward wedding photo shredding service has become one of the few solutions amid the divorce trend in China. According to statistics from the World of Statistics published on August 1 of this year, China is ranked 17th in the list of countries with high divorce rates, approximately 44%, with nearly 9 out of 20 couples divorcing on average. The top three countries are Portugal, 94%, Spain, 85%, and Luxembourg, 79%, while the three countries with the lowest rates are India, 1%, Vietnam, 7%, and Tajikistan, 10%. Largest population county in China shuts down 50 kindergartens in eight months. In various regions across mainland China, there has been a widespread closure of kindergartens, reflecting the ongoing decline in the country's birth rate and exacerbating the population crisis. Notably, according to China's media, the 21st Century Economic Report, in the largest county in China in terms of population, Linquan County, Anhui, as of August, 50 kindergartens have stopped operating, 
making up 11.8% of the total number of kindergartens in the county. According to local county government data from February of this year, Lin Quan County experienced a 9.2% decrease in the number of children in kindergartens throughout the entire county compared to the previous year. Particularly concerning is the fact that the local birth rate has fallen below the death rate. However, the reduction in the number of kindergartens is not limited to a specific area but is a nationwide issue. According to official statistics, in 2022, the total number of kindergartens nationwide decreased by 5610 compared to the previous year. Experts anticipate that in 2023, both the number of kindergartens and the student population may experience a further accelerated decline. In the latter half of this year, there have been continuous reports of kindergarten closures across the country, providing ample evidence of this prevailing trend. The 21st Century Economic Report reveals that over the past two years, especially in 2022, the number of newborns was 9.56 million, marking the first time since 1950 that China's annual birth rate has fallen below 10 million. What is even less optimistic is that the impact of China's declining population will continue to affect primary and secondary schools. Dong Yuxing, a population expert and the director of the Guangdong Provincial Institute of Population Development, concludes that factors such as rising costs associated with marriage, childbirth, parenting, education, and personal living expenses, along with high housing prices, increased employment pressure, and work stress, have contributed to the increasingly serious phenomena of being unable to afford, raise, dare to have, or want to have children. Some perspectives suggest that in the coming decades, under the rule of the Chinese Communist Party, CCP, the issues of population decline and aging will become increasingly prominent social challenges in China. Don't forget to leave a comment in the section below to share your opinions on today's topic with us. Make sure to like and subscribe to see more interesting topics from China Truths. Thank you.